Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Garmin G5, uh, available for Air Manager, as well as kind of how it works a little bit and how you can kind of implement it into the flight simulator. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first things first, uh, we're sitting here in this uh, lovely T6, uh, looking at the instrumentation, and uh, it's, it's a little lacking. I mean, I got a little radio down here where I can switch with some knobs and got some light switches and things like that. But you know what make this thing really, really nice? Um, let's see here. Uh, let me think. think ah, oh, oh, there we go. How about a Garmin G5? So now what this is, is uh, for those of you not familiar with what Air Manager, we've talked about this before. It's an application that you unfortunately have to pay for. And uh, like I said, I've got a lot of different options on it. And in this application, it gives you the ability to basically add instruments onto a panel. Now I have three monitors at home. And normally what I do is on my third monitor, which is like a little tiny thing. It's also a touch screen, which is kind of cool, is I put all extra instrumentation on it. You know, just taking a look through some of my different options here. You know, I've got things like screens. You know, I've got an Aspen if I want to play with a different technology. You know, I've got things that are traditional, I've got airline and all sorts of different instrumentation, and I can display them just like you see this gauge right here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to hide that and go ahead and show it one more time. So you're probably wondering, okay, so uh, what are we looking at here? Well, uh, basically this thing is a two-part uh, gauge. The first one is the Garmin G5 itself. Uh, you can see we can have a bunch of different options in here. We can do dual queue, we can do single queue, we can also define what the default function is, how many different devices we have, we can put it in miles an hour. In this particular case, I'm in miles an hour because this aircraft is a miles an hour aircraft. But even more cool is that gives you some abilities if you scroll down here is you can actually do things like define what your different speeds are like your v speeds and your landing speeds and your glide speeds i'm not going to go through and i'll play with these all individually i just wanted to kind of share those with you our hsi version of course like i said very very similar you can define exactly what you want so i'm going to go ahead and uh, hide this for now because we don't need to see it and we'll take a look at the g5 unit itself so G5, for those of you who have not got to play with these, uh, in the real world, um, incredibly, most of my time is with the G5 now. Um, in the old days, everything for me was a steam instrument, and now I've gotten the, uh, a little spoiled with this. By the way, this is a window. This is actually on top. Like, if I click it like this, do you see how it's kind of chilling on top of its own thing like that? This is something that's actually solid in the world. Keep in mind, though, I can still use my flight simulator controls. You know, I can zoom in, I can zoom out. Uh, some of you are probably saying, could you please put those just next to each other so they're out of the way? Um, no. <laughs> If anything, I guess I'd have to sit here like this or something like that, but again, I'm not going to do it. So the G5 display is pretty straightforward. On your left-hand side, we have a speed tape. In the outside here, you've got the brown ground. We've got the blue sky as well. We have our little attitude tape. We have this little line here, which is going to tell us how tipped we are. This little ball right here is the ball that you're thinking of. Over here on the right, you have the ability to go ahead and see what your altitude is. Notice we have a density altitude. And below that, we have our barometric pressure. If you need to change the barometric pressure, you're going to want to use whatever the in-game defaults are, because in-game defaults will actually override the ones that exist over in the uh, flight simulator inside the function itself. So kind of keep that in mind that you're not going to be able to push the buttons, come over here and go like this and press enter or do any of those kind of things because that's, like I said, it's going to hijack it from you. You have a couple basic functions in here that you can use, but for now, this is more or less a display. These buttons don't work because of the recent sim update that they did. So down here, uh, we have, of course, uh, popping down here, we have our classic HSI. We've got a little lever line here. We have our VORs for any bearings. We have a GPS, any bearings, and selected information. We also get wind as well as heading. Now, you're probably saying, well, uh, let's get in the air. Okay, I'm fine. I'll get in the air. I'll put, give it full power, and off we go. Now, there's a couple extra things that are going to start to appear on a Garmin G5 when you start getting airborne. Uh, my favorite one, of course, is if you look really carefully, there's now a little pink line. Uh, that pink line there, the one at the bottom that keeps going back and forth this time, my rate of turn, uh, the one that you see that's up there by the 231, let me grab my mouse and show and rotate it, this is your your actual ground track. Now you actually have a copy of that ground track right here. Now, the reason that is so cool is if you need to maintain a specific ground track, you just have to put that pink marker on the one you want. So for example, let's say uh, we need to do a ground track of a uh, 210 here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the plane. Whoop, we got a little out of coordination there. Let's fix that up. And I'm just going to go ahead and level the plane off right here. Check it out. You see how that little magenta uh, triangle is now pointing at 2-1? That means the aircraft is actually moving in the 2-1-0 degree heading, even though the plane itself is not pointing at 2-1-0. The reason this is absolutely amazingly wonderful is because if you're trying to do some cross-country work and you want to make sure that you don't get lost, uh, now you can guarantee no matter what the wind is, which by the way is 7 knots if you're looking up there at the top left, no matter what the wind is, we now can reliably keep the same direction on the ground. Now, you're probably saying, well, this is pretty cool and all, but um, what I really, really want to be able to do is I navigate using GPS. Oh, it doesn't look like we ha don't have a GPS. Actually, we do. 
So if you pop up to the GTN 750, which is another free add-on uh, for people who have not played with this, it's absolutely spectacular. We can now interface these two systems together to essentially do this. Now, one thing I want to point out real fast is remember that a lot of these have the ability to pop out. Uh, this particular one does not, unfortunately, which is kind of a shame because it'd be kind of fun if it did. Uh, we could pop this and put that on that other screen. But like I said, unfortunately, we can't do it in this context. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to the map function. And now notice we now have a nice modern G5, the nice HSI. And now we have a nice little one of these as well. So if I wanted to, for example, zoom out just a teeny tiny bit. Now you can see we've got all the Philippines kind of chilling here. Uh, let's say I want to go to RPVM. So come over here again we've done tutorials on this before we'll do rpvm press enter it's going to ask us we're going to press activate we're going to change our cdi to gps Ta-da! and now you'll notice that the hsi display on our handy dandy garmin has now updated to reflect the actual new direction that we're traveling in so now you know it's like oh i got to travel to that destination now i can go ahead and uh, turn the whole aircraft around keep in mind the destination is you know right there <laughs> let's go ahead and put a little bit of angle on this thing speed it up and now, just like that, ooh, that was well coordinated. Now, I can actually use that particular device, even though I have none of those instrumentations inside this aircraft, for the purposes of that kind of navigation as well. Now, you're probably saying, well, does it work for VOR as well? Yeah, it absolutely works for VOR. Uh, one of the cool things with the VOR, actually, is the fact that we have the ability to select what particular source of the VR we want to do. So, for example, um, whoop, MCT, you can actually always like that function right there. So what we could do, for example, is um, let's say we want to look up the frequency of that particular VOR that happens to be right next to us. We'll go out to see in a second. So one of the things we could do, um, I got a cop stamp, stop saying that, you know how it goes. Uh, let's see here, we'll go down to the direct two button, no one's called MCT. We'll do MCT. That should uh, recognize that as a VOR. Uh, it's the one right next to us. I'm actually going to turn us around and get us away from it. And that would take us directly to that one. Give me just a moment. All right, got it. So we'll come over to here, 114.3, transfer. Make sure we are on a CDI of VLOC. And now we have our familiar green line that you probably recognize from folks who uh, play around the G1000 too much. So one of the things we can do now is we now have to set our new course. Uh, let's actually go out a little bit further here, make it a little bit easier for us. Wow, we're doing 300 right now. Look at my true airspeed, 6,000. <laughs> nice. So what I'm going to do is I actually have a button on my controller that gives me the ability to rotate my selected heading here. So again, remember, none of these default features are part of our T6 here. Uh, if you look down our instrumentation, yeah, we have an RMI, which is nice, but we do not have the ability to do this normally. So I'm just going to keep cranking it, keep cranking, keep swimming, keep swimming. And there we go. So it looks like we're going to end up about 150. So let's go ahead and spin ourselves around here. Go ahead and undo it. Whoop, a little too hard on the rudder there. That's all right. Perfect. So now check this out. Remember that we had this little magenta triangle to help us out? Notice we now have the ability to actually help it with our VOR. See how we know our ground track is pushing us to the right, which means this line now is going to shift to the left. I can now wait patiently. I'll give it just a moment. And right there. See how it's nice and centered? So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn the airplane and I'm going to center the magenta triangle right on the green arrow right there. So that means that without having any knowledge whatsoever of what the wind conditions are, even though I know it's a crosswind, I can see it on a little display, I am now perfectly on that course without needing any fancy GPS or anything like that. Now, I'm sure our World War II pilots who flew this thing way back in the day would probably love to have that feature because it would make it much, much simpler to do instrument navigation. Also notice that we have a handy dandy little diamond right here that can help us out a lot as far as being able to predict stuff like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look back to the map here. Uh, we'll go ahead and set up our Direct 2. Direct 2, uh, we'll do the same target we did a few moments ago. And we'll just continue. We'll zoom out just a tiny bit there. RV, RPVM. 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 Enter. Uh, that looks good to me. Activate. Looks pretty good. And we'll be going back on top here. And we'll go back to the GPS. Now you're probably saying, well, does this work? Hmm. So we need to pick the particular airport. So we can pick our approaches. Let's see here. We have our RNAVs. We got our RNAV 4. We'll go ahead and pick that one. Looks pretty easy. Uh, transition. Uh, Tonio is Tonio. Oh, Tonio is in the middle of nowhere. Kulas. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and um, um, that one looks fine. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. I like that particular approach. Good, good, good. 
So now you can see exactly what we can do with that particular technology where we can select a specific approach that would go into a specific landing mode as well. So the advantage to that is anything that gets copied onto here is also going to show up on this display just like we would normally see at those particular places. So again, you can see how incredibly, incredibly powerful the combination between the 750, which is free, and the G5, which is external. So uh, one thing that I will say is, like I said, I kind of wish this worked. This is something that worked before. Unfortunately, it doesn't because of uh, some of the SIM updates that have come out recently, but I'm sure that is something they will update in the future. And again, you can pop these in regular GPSs, our regular aircraft. And again, anything supports this. I could put this on the 737. I could put this in the SR-72 if I want. It doesn't matter. And like I said, I can drag this at any point onto another monitor, which is typically what I do with it. But other than that, enjoy.